going to tell you a little story. This girl, Mary, had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. There they go. Of course, Mary's lamb may have had a little bleach job and a little tox. But here at the Henry Ford, wrinkled sheep are all the rage. Mankind has been using sheep for their fleece, used to make wool for thousands of years. Because it's so soft, the most sought after wool comes from the breed known as Merino. Way back in the day, farmers figured out that if their Merino sheep had more folds of skin, which looked like wrinkles in the fleece, they could produce more wool and the farmers could make more money. The innovation of the Merino breed started probably in the first part of the 19th century when the farmers started selectively breeding the wrinkly sheep with other wrinkly sheep and producing these grotesquely wrinkled sheep. The wool was sold by the pound, so the more skin and surface area that you'd have on your sheep, the more wool you would produce per animal. So it's a very economical way to maximize your profit. Originally, to harvest the wool, farmers had to carefully shear sheep by hand. But in the 1920s, mechanical shearing was invented. When that happened, the Merino's wrinkly fleece became a problem. So the farmers bred those wrinkles out of Merino sheep to make it faster and easier for the electric shears to do their job. And the wrinkled Merinos soon disappeared. Or did they? Here in Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford, farmers raise these rare and wrinkled Merino sheep. I talked with the Henry Ford's Brian Egan and Brian Spencer to find out how they brought back these crinkly cuties. Why does the Henry Ford have sheep? We are trying to authentically furnish what a 19th century sheep farm would have looked like. And you all bred them to look this way. Right, we've been back breeding these sheep for over 30 years to look like sheep from 1885. It really is a source of pride for us. Backbreeding means restoring genetic traits to an animal so it resembles its ancestor. Can't be easy shearing it's those not, deep wrinkles. It's not easy. You have to navigate all the folds of skin and pull the skin taut, lay the blade shears down. It's not easy. Thank goodness I don't have to do it. They, well. say a good, they say you have to have a strong back and a weak mind to be a good shear. I'm willing to teach you if you're willing to learn. You have okay. a few hours to spare? I, I think my mind is weak enough to handle it. <laughs> oh, OK, fantastic. Sheep are domesticated animals and rely on humans to shear their fleece. Otherwise, it would get too thick and heavy, causing health problems for the animal. Ryan brought out a sheep which looks gray because its skin secretes a waxy grease called lanolin that protects the wool and picks up a lot of dirt. All right, so what are you going to cut off? So we're not going to cut anything we're today. Anything. We're not going to cut uh, she gets She gets one good haircut a year, and she had that about six months ago. So in another few months, she'll have a nice, long fleece that she'll be ready to get rid of. Now, if you look through here, after you get past the head, you have all these wrinkles, all these jowls. And look how, look how gray that is right at the top. And the gray is the lanolin or dirt? That's dirt that the lanolin attracted. Oh, OK. Yep. Right. And then as you go closer in, it's nice and white. Oh, look at nice that. Nice and white. Oh, she, oh, so she, oh, she got herself bleached. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> she would, OK, oh. Since our sheep didn't need a trim, Ryan asked me to help carry it back into the barn with the rest of the flock. Here she goes. All right. Ooh. Nicely done. Nicely done. And they all seemed very relieved I wasn't the one holding the shears. <laughs>